Swinburne University of Technology. Hi and welcome to Swinburne Codecasts. I'm Andrew Kane. And I'm Jake. And in this video, we'll be looking at basic file IO. So far, our programs have had data uh, within the program existing inside our variables, which we can use. We can read and write values to those variables. But when, of course, the program ends, those variables go away. It's all, all the data's gone. And that's been really, really cool so far. But if only there was a way that we were able to save and load our data in between our programs running. Yeah. We can use file.io to read and write values from files. And this is what you know, all programs do if they want to keep data between executions. Yeah. So before we jump into how to actually do that, why don't we just take a quick look at how we've been uh, doing it so far, basically, within our, in our programs. Yeah, so reading and writing to files is pretty much the same as reading and writing to the terminal. So the way we read and write to the terminal and the way we read and write from files is only very small change between the two. That's really good. So let's have a look at, at the way we can read from file to start with. Oh, sorry, read from the terminal read to start with. Read from the terminal, yeah. yeah. Uh, so what we can do, this instruction here allows us to read a line worth of text from the terminal. And what it does is it effectively scans from, you can imagine the terminal input as being the cursor. Yeah. When you start typing, that text is sort of flowing into the program and it has its own position of where it's up to and it then moves its cursor yeah. through the text that's coming in. So it's scanning or reading the data that's coming in. And we can read in, say, a whole line worth of data. So we're looking for the, the end of line character. So it reads everything up to that end of line and puts that all into one string value. And that's how we could read in a string's worth of, of and that, data. And that end of line character is actually our enter key. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So when you hit enter, that tells it where that, the end of that line is. So it's scanning for that enter key and now it has uh, some string that it's storing into a variable. Yeah, so it's read an entire line into a variable. Yeah. So, uh, but I, we don't always read in strings. We yep. want to read in integers sometimes. So if we know for certain that it's going to be an integer, uh, then the way we can do that is uh, using this code here. What it will do is this one will actually read in three numbers. So off yep. the one line, it's, go, or it's going to scan through the line and it's going to look for uh, an integer. It will then read the next integer and then it will read a, a, a double. And in between that, you can have some white space. So like, yeah. it might be tabs or spaces or even new yeah. line characters, but it will look for those three numbers. So that it's got some way to distinguish between the three values that yeah. it's now, trying to read in. Different programming languages might work slightly differently here. So in one case, uh, the program might crash if it's not a number. So this yeah. is where you have to be certain it is a number. Yeah. Uh, in other cases, it will just say, well, it wasn't a number and it will sort of give up. And yeah. So you've got to be a little bit careful with how that works, but the basic idea is the same. We can read in multiple values. And we don't and we can read in a combination of, of the both. We can read in some integers and we can and we can also read in a line. Yeah, so you could read in, say you had a number of integers at the start of the line and then some text that followed it. You could read in the two integers and then the text. It's it is harder to say read in some text and then some numbers on the same line, because you don't have really a very clear way of identifying where the end of the yeah. line is and the start of the text. Because you could have numbers in your string. That's right. And it uh, does... It, yeah, so then you've got to get into some processing. You probably yeah. then want to read the whole line in and work out for yourself where the numbers were. Yeah. Uh, so if we're working with files where we can determine the format of the data in the file, you want to keep it as simple as you can. Yeah. So like have everything either on its own line yeah. or have, okay, this line is going to have these two integer yeah. values and then this or, other double or value or something This like is that. how I'm going to separate each of my values. Yeah, so that you can then work it out yeah. when you break it back up. And uh, it's pretty s the same for writing. So we can write out some strings. Yep. Um, we can write out a combination, again, of a string and, and an integer. And we don't really have the same problem as before because... You can do this in any yeah, way you the, want. The writing out knows. is easier. Yeah. 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 And yeah. also, some of you might have noticed that when you wrote out... Uh, a double. Yep. It was writing out, say, ten decimal points worth of yeah, of and scientific notation. Yeah, as well. which is kind of useless sometimes when we're just writing our programs. Yeah, so. we want it to be a simple, easy to read number. You yeah. can actually format that output quite easily, so that each of the languages provides a different way of just specifying. Okay, I want it to be at least this wide, and I want it to have yeah. at most two decimal yeah. places. And so we can indicate that. Yes. Yeah. All right. So that's the basics of the things you can do with file.io. You need to be able to write or 
read the data in and write the data out. Yep. The next bit we need to be able to do is actually hook that up with a file. Yeah. Yep. And so, so, in, so instead of uh, reading from the terminal, we're, we're reading from a file, but we have to tell the program what which file we're reading from. Yeah, that's right. And we can do this. It's just a variable. We're, we've got the file. Yep. And we uh, we give it a name, and we can and we can assign the name of our file to the, uh, the to actual the, to this actual file var variable. File variables. Yeah. yeah. So the file variable in your program represents which file it is you're going to be interacting with off your, your disk. Yeah. Yeah. So once we've done that, in some languages, we have to mark the file as, as the... Well, yeah, read or write, depending on how you're going to yep. work with it. Uh, and then we can read data from it. So here's an example of how to read a value from the file. Now I'll notice what all we're really doing, I mean, the main difference here is in just instead of saying read this data, which would read it from the terminal, yep. we say read this data from this file. Yeah and then store it in these variables. Yeah, so it really, it's, it's reading almost the same. Instead of reading from the terminal, read from the file and, and put it here. What you put, what you read on this line, put it into this variable. Yeah, so these are using pass by reference. And so we're getting effectively passing across a pointer, in this case, to the name variable. And we, what we're reading is then being stored into that name variable. Yeah, and this so read line will read a single line from the file, and if we want to read the next line, we just so all we do is we just put a put this code, put this, yeah. in, put this instruction in again, and it will read the next line. Yeah, so this yeah that instruction just reads one line. If you want to do it, read another line, just have one yep. followed by another. So it's just iterating through the lines in the yeah, file. Yeah, that's right. And so what we could do if you wanted to read all of the lines in a file, there is a special EOF which is the end of file, so we can check. We could loop while we're not at the end of the file, read another line in, and in this case, just print the line out. So this is going to like, read a text file yeah. and print out it's the text file. It's going to read every single line in the file, store it in our variable, and write out that, that, that string. Yeah. So it'll store on each one one at a time. So it'll read the first line into that variable. When you print it out, it will then read the next line, and it will store it over the top of that, that old yeah, value. Yeah, and it's the same to write to a file. Yeah, that's right. So to write to a file, uh, what we would do is, if we have some values we want to write to the file, such as we've got here, yep. then we can just get those variables. Once we've opened the file, we tell it that we're going to write to it. We can then write each of those values into the file. And when we're finished, we close the file and yep. we're done. So reading and writing for files are actually fairly simple. Yeah, it's pretty much the same as reading and writing to a terminal. Yeah, the main different, or the main thing you've got to think about is how you're going to organize the data so that when you've stored it, you can get it back to reuse because it again. Because the program, program needs to know what it's about to read in That's from right. the file. That's right, yeah. Just like it needs to know what it's going to read in from the terminal. Yes. Yeah, exactly. All right, so that's it for basic file I.O. Uh, so we've seen an example of how to read values. Here's an example for how to write values as well. So we've got both, just a reading and writing values. And these files will persist, and then we can read it in again next time we run the program. It's not just going to disappear from memory like how it has. Yeah, how our variables do. Yeah. So next up, why don't you guys take a look at our records and enums files? Uh, there's also uh, arrays is probably the topic after that. Arrays and pointers yep. are also good to have a look at. Uh, otherwise, we hope you've enjoyed this video and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye. This has been a Spindoin production.